Hello and welcome to Bioco. In this video, we will study how we can utilize Ensemble database for the gene analysis purposes. Basically, uh, Ensemble, as you know, Ensemble allows us to see all of the genes that are present in a particular genome so that we can analyze the particular genome according to our hypothesis of um, our particular research. Uh, NCBI and other databases such as Uniprod, which is a protein database, and uh, NCBI, which is a genome database and gene database, and as well as protein database, uh, and various other databases are provided by NCBI. But all of them are scattered around, and you have to figure out the information by yourself uh, by lurking around different hyperlinks. And so, uh, so in 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 a nutshell, all of that information is scattered around a particular data uh, database. So, whereas as compared to Ensemble, we have information uh, of a particular gene, a particular protein, or a particular genome as well in a single place. So, all of that has its, uh, all of the information on Ensemble has its own relevant page and that particular relevant page has a lot of information such as the splice variants uh, in case of gene, transcript comparison, sequence, comparative genomics, or, uh, ontology information, orthologs, paralogs, and genetic variation and all sort of information about a particular uh, biological entity such as protein, DNA, RNA. We have, we have all of that information on Ensemble, uh, ensemble pages uh, as compared to other data databases as I said earlier. So in this video, we are going to analyze a particular gene in GSK3B as we have been trying to understand this gene throughout this ensemble series. So uh, GSK3B basically stands for uh, glycogen synthase kinase 3 alpha or 3 beta gene. Basically, we are going to analyze it on the chicken genome. So this is the basic home page of uh, GSK3B gene and that is present within chicken and it is the, and the accession of uh, uh, it, this gene is uh, starts with ENS and then goes all the way to 977. Then we uh, this is a basic home page of uh, a particular gene. Whenever you're going to analyze a particular gene, you will have this sort of uh, this of sort of home page of a particular gene. Any gene, only the information will be changed, but but the layout will stay the same. So uh, this is more useful just to analyze a particular gene rather than uh, lurking around different databases. So in the previous video, we uh, we actually saw how we can uh, retrieve the sequence, what were the surprise variants of this gene, and what were the transcript. Uh, com uh, we did actually the uh, com uh, transcript comparison. We retrieved those sequences. So we are not actually going uh, going that path now, but we will now analyze this gene according to the comparative genomics analysis, and we will see how this gene compares to other genomes and other alignments or gene tree or orthologs or parallels or families, whatever that sort of information is uh, is actually comprehending the comparative genomics. So uh, just click on comparative genomics uh, on any gene. I recommend that when, when you are uh, practicing this uh, video or this lecture uh, that, you yeah, that you try to work on your particular interest of gene rather than utilize the GSK3B. It is useful in that scenario that you will learn more things about a particular gene rather than just uh, following us or following me in, in this particular video. So as you know, we do have two transcripts and GSK3B201, GSK3B202 uh, and uh, we are in the uh, comparative genomics uh, uh, track, right? The track that you will select will have its own bluish color, light bluish color, so you know, okay, you are on the uh, comparative genomics. So first of all, what we will do, we will do, uh, try to see the alignments. I'm going to open it in this in, in a new tab so that we uh, do have a record of whatever we are doing, uh, whatever we are seeing. So whenever you try to open genomics, al uh, genomic alignment, what really happens is that only those regions or only, only this, this uh, gene region will be compared against different genomes uh, for different species. And uh, so that you can see, okay, this is where your gene is changing. This is where it remains conserved and that sort of information. So just click on select alignment. And this is where you will have the opportunity to select various species. For example, you can select uh, multi multiple or pairwise, uh, pairwise uh, information such as, for example, let's suppose that you would like to uh, compare this gene against uh, human, human GSK3B. So just click on pairwise because it will, be, oh, um, we, we need just a second uh, organism and uh, species and we do not really need multiple ones. So just click on pairwise, then click on human and just apply. 
so after applying you will see uh, the page will refresh and then we will see the alignment of this gene uh, with uh, human uh, human gene and then we will see more information according to the region wise information for example uh, if you would like to see the image of this alignment let's click on the image it will be more uh, useful for us to actually comprehend this uh, alignment and uh, now you will see that uh, this is basic the, basically the representation of the alignment. We will see how we can retrieve the aligned regions, but this is basically the region of our alignment between chicken and human. Now, you, you, if you have uh, if you had selected multiple organism, or if we had selected multiple organism, we will see multiple organisms over here. So you can also uh, export this image um, by clicking over here. Anyways, so as you see, uh, this is. Uh, the human genome over here and this is basically the separator this black line is the separator and now you can see this is where GSK3B is present and it is being compared against the entire GSK3B gene of Homo sapiens but uh, now you need to understand the gene, le gene legend as I said earlier in the previous video that we have to understand the legend so that we can actually comprehend so and Havana is basically a, an automated uh, automated tool provided by Ensemble that is basically a pipeline for automated analysis of uh, genomics, uh, genomic uh, of genomic uh, alignments or genomes of species, so that it can comprehend okay uh, or it can predict which regions are genes, which regions are intron, that sort of information. So you should not really rely on Havana because it's, it is an automated. Rather, you should always re rely on the uh, experimentally determined genes and gene lengths. So this is where you can see that uh, we have a protein coding exon over here, and same is or uh, same is true for the chicken genome as well. And it is comparatively comparatively uh, conserved throughout the throughout both of these genomes, but if you see over here we do have an zone over here but we do not have it over here and same goes for one region that is present over here and we do not have any region over here so this is basically the uh, region that we try to ascertain that uh, okay this is where the gene is um, conserved this is where they are differentiating and you can also see that there is an indel after the 50 base pair uh, it, it is basically pinpointing the region where the indels are and you can you can be, be be sure of that from over here so this is how you can see the alignments between uh, different species uh, but if we go back we need to actually see the actual align aligned regions and uh, for that we just uh, go back to the alignment page and this is where you will see the aligned regions so basically when we are trying to align a particular gene we will obviously have the uh, length we need to understand the total length base pair of a particular gene that you are trying to uh, align for example you can see it over here that the uh, uh, that our actual transcript is 201 and its uh, base pair length is 1462 so that means we need we need to see a particular region basically this is a transcript but it is it is not the actual gene itself so you need to understand that first of all and uh, that gene could be and from here so, so you need to understand the location and it is being compared to the location of this gene gsk3b on another species that is human in this case so it is saying that uh, your gene of interest is present over here and then it is present over here on the homo sapiens so it is present on the third chromosome on humans but it is present on the first chromosome on chicken so th that th this is how you uh, actually determine the alignment so if you click on uh, alignment uh, just uh, if you click on a particular block you will then see a particular aligned region of the of of those regions and this is basically the aligned region just click on display full alignment and then you will see the entire aligned regions between both of these chromosomes and then you can see okay this is where the genes are changing this is where they are differentiating but you should always understand that these regions could be differentiating they could they it does not always means that this is actual region of uh, that uh, gene itself it could be just the chromosome region and that is actually uh, highly aligned to the, your gene so let's go back and let's see uh, the gene tree so that we can understand how uh, where our gene actually stands on the genetic tree uh, genetic phylogenetic uh, phylogenetic or genetic analysis sort of uh, tree building and uh, 
for that we need to actually click over here gene tree and uh, then we will be able to see uh, how many duplicates uh, or how many uh, parallels or how many orthologs are present in this gene tree it is obviously going to take some time because um, uh, it depends uh, how popular a particular gene within the genomes is and um, so this is basically the gene tree and uh, then you can see a gene tree each gene tree has its own ensemble id the number of genes present in this gene is 6 uh, 636 the number of species node is 540 and the number of duplication so that means this gene actually duplicated 45 times and the number of ambiguous genes is 50 there were no gene split events that means this gene did not differentiate into some other gene but uh, due to speciation we had about 550 and so this is basically the page that actually um, a graphical representation of the genetic tree of uh, gsk3b and uh, they will be compared against other these this gene will be compared against other uh, genes of different species so that we can understand uh, how and where our gene diverge where it remain conserved and that sort of information so first of all before interpreting the first and the foremost uh, trick is to just understand the legend first of all so as i said earlier this is the alignment region and each of these genes are actually aligned together so first of all we need to understand that so that means the collapse alignment means that any region that is um, empty but squared uh, has 0 to 33 percent line sequence and if, if if it is a light green then it is from 33 to 66 and then finally the dark green goes from 66 to 100 and the same goes for the nodes if it is empty blue then it is gene node if it is a darker blue uh, filled darker blue you can see over here it is speciation node that means uh, this is the point where speciation happened and then we ha do have the duplication node that this is where the duplication actually arrived and the ambiguous node is the uh, cyan color and the gene split event is the uh, squared orange color but there is no speciation uh, gene split event sorry then we have the branch length as well for example if it is uh, broken then we, we do have a 10x branch length if it is red broken then we have 100 branch length but it is if it is a complete line then we have the simple uh, 1x branch length so gene gene id basically if it is red colored then it is the gene id of our interest uh, of, of gene of interest for example we were working with the gsk3b so it should be in the red color right uh, all of the other ones are black or some other color and uh, if it is a blue color then this means that this is the this is the particular gene that actually uh, became a paralog within the same species so that means it duplicated and it remained within the same species rather than uh, going into different species so let's now analyze this uh, tree first of all i will uh, come from the top and uh, as you can see basically this is the phylogenetic tree of all of the, uh, all of the genes uh, gsk3b genes present in different species that could be uh, drosophila that is fly uh, osteoglossophili birds and uh, then chicken itself golden pheasant turkeys and basically these are the birds and uh, then we have lizards mammals and uh, we do have elephant shark redfish uh, spotted gar tropical clawed frog and hagfish and different other uh, species are involved such as uh, service as well animals and fungi are also involved so basically uh, we need to understand the split of the tree throughout the no noting throughout the nodes that are present in this tree we need to understand how and when our particular gene of interest actually diverged so if we go back from uh, over here we can see that first of all we need to understand the square which is empty so we go over it is a gene node and if it is darker color then this is the speciation node so that means chicken and uh, golden pheasant were actually diverged due to a speciation event so that is why uh, these genes were actually diverged from each other and they were present in different species then we go back to the initial ancestral node and then we understand that this is an ambiguous node ambiguous node basically means that they are not certain what really happened at this point so they are more uh, the scientists are or the researchers are doing more research on that topic and then same goes for so, 
now we understand that uh, this that uh, the GSK three B that is present within chicken is actually related to all of the genes or GSK three genes that are present within the, within the birds, right? But as we go outside this region, or as we go outside this region, we then try to see that it is now more divergent with the lizards, mammals, and as we move away, we see that Drosophila is a lot, a lot. Uh, distant uh, to the GSK 3B that is present within the chicken. All of them do have GSK 3B, but it is more diverged within other species, especially the uh, Saccharomyces cerevisiae and the finally animals, basically, which is a out node. And uh, then you can also understand that C. elegans do also have GSK 3B, but it is a lot distant as compared to uh, if it is present within elephant, shark, and then chicken itself. So we do also have the alignment and uh, you can now see that uh, all of these regions if you see over here these four or five of them they have highly aligned regions but if we move away from them we can see that according to the coloring we do not have that sort of aligned regions and uh, especially the Dro uh, drosophila it has a lot of exons and that is highly aligned regions so that was all about gene tree and i hope you understand if you have any questions you can uh, reach us reach out to us and we will most definitely help you out on this analysis so let's go back and let's see orthologs orthologs basically means that the genes have actually duplicated but they are present in different species not in the same species so in but in parallels the genes actually duplicate but remain in the same species as well so we are actually trying to ascertain the orthologs so that means we need to understand how this gene actually duplicated and then was actually present in different species or not. So, first of all, uh, whenever you try to click on uh, orthologs, you will open up a particular page. And you, before you go to the analysis, we need to understand the actual actual layout of the data. So, first of all, you can also download the orthologs. If you could just click on download, a page will open up, and then you will have the possibility to click uh, to select all of these uh, sequences and just download all of them. So it is more uh, comprehensive for you to just download all of these sequences, then you can anal um, just analyze them in your uh, uh, tree analysis or whatever. So there are different uh, formats available, such as FileLib, Cluster Mega, MSF, Nexus, PFAM, and various other. So I'm going to back, go back, and now you need to understand that there are sometimes there are one-to-one -one orthologs, then there are one-to-many many to many orthologs and without orthologs so what are these basically uh, one to one orthologs means that if your gene of interest has if your gene of interest is present in a, in another species and only one gene is present in that species and there was no duplication so that means it is one to one but if if your gene of interest is present in in a particular species but there are many many duplications of that gene or more than one then it becomes one to many but if your gene of interest is actually present three or four times or two or many times within your species of interest and it is also present many times in another species then it is many to many and same goes for without orthologs so that means if your gene if your gene is not not really present in any other species so that means it is a speciation set and uh, we have in most cases by default all species will be selected and it is better for if we just select a particular um, smaller set so that we can analyze it in more meaningful way i'm going to select uh, this one and after that we need to just make sure that the page loads up again okay there we go. The page refreshed, and now we have my, we do have the information in that tabular format. You can download this information. Just click over here, and you will be able to download the entire table. Anyways, so now we understand that. Let's find some uh, some popular species so that we can actually understand it. In okay, this is duck. So we we have a we basically duck is a is a family member of birds of avis and. Uh, it is more meaningful to actually study this. So it is actually saying that uh, the species that you, uh, the type is one to one. So that means uh, your GSK three B is also present in the duck, but only one of them is present. 
and uh, then we uh, have its own, its accession id of duck gsk3b then we have the um, percentage of the alignment then we have the um, alignment of the query itself the the score is provided the whole genome coverage uh, alignment coverage is provided and the confidence is provided so basically it is uh, telling us that uh, it is interpreting for us that uh, there are only one to one uh, orthologs present within your species and all of these are basically orthologs so if we go back let's find some many to many so that we can understand and okay there we go so these are the species that actually have many um, many gsk3b's present within them and uh, it is useful so if, if we just click on this particular region we can then go to that particular page and see how many parallels are present so as you can see it is also saying that one paralog is present of this particular gene which is gsk3b of some species i am not sure which one it is written over here it is a desert tortoise right so let's go back and this is basically how you uh, analyze the orthologs of a particular gene if there are parallels present you will be able to click on the parallel so the uh, within chicken there are no parallels available that is a certain because there is no information over here but we do have 307 orthologs of this gene so let's go back to the main page and now we can click on families and try to ascertain what families to be to our uh, protein belongs and as you can see it is on the top it is a member of one protein family and basically this protein family will be actually displaying or interpreting information for us in a way that we can assert and okay so this is where our gene of interest is actually a part of that family gene family or protein family so th this means it should be working or pr uh, providing a function function in the body like xyz or whatever so if if we try to ascertain the protein family function we will be able to ascertain the function of a particular gene it is obviously going to take some time and once once it finishes up we will get back okay so our results are back now basically this information is uh, provided by by the panther database and uh, if you just click on in, in this particular accession id you will be taken to the protein family page and then you will be able to see all of the proteins that are present within this uh, within this family protein family and you can just directly click uh, download family alignment and then you will be able to download the entire data set of this protein family and you can download it in any format you would like and then you can analyze in your own analysis so it is also recommended that you first of all you, you remove all of these other transcripts you need to understand which transcript is your of interest because some in tra in transcripts are not protein coding at all so you, you should not really be working them with them anyways